Hey, welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Tyler Wheel, and this is episode 582. <laughs> yes, um, I just wanted to get on here and just do a um, healing video. I wanted to discuss my truth. And just been like a whole lot of stuff going on. A lot of things I'm dealing with internally, but I'm going to be all right. And we just are surviving, but a lot of us are existing and now living. And the moment you decide to live, it's going to be some things that's going to fall apart. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of things that fall apart, especially from friends, family, um, job, just people you love, whatever. And sometimes you need to understand that. The moment you decide to change your life, everything gonna change around you. Everybody is going to show you who they are, but it's okay. It's okay to know who you are. It's okay to know your limits, your boundaries. And toxic people hate boundaries. And this is no exception. Family, friends, everybody is going to hate when you tell them no. When you tell them, I can't do that anymore. I can't kick it with you anymore. I got to stay here and work on myself. And you're going to be the most hated. You're going to be the topic of discussion. You're going to be a traitor. You're going to be, oh, you think you're better than us or you think you're better than everybody. They're going to attack you. Smear campaigns all day. You know, they hate anybody who decides to stand up for something. When you are the lowest of the low, everybody go and love you. When your addictions, when your demons ignites your angels, you're going to be hated by the people who want you to destroy yourself and destroy any potential that you have. And we give people a pass all the time because we think we're supposed to honor these people. We think we're supposed to love people when they're not being supportive. They're not being encouraging. They're not showing love, you know? And this is a, a really pivoted moment where you gotta choose you. <laughs> it don't matter what age group you in, we all gonna have to do it every once in a while. We all have gonna have to choose our social lives or lives after death. You know, we gonna have to choose whether we wanna live eternally or for the moment. And I wanna live for eternally. Living for the moment is so temporary. It's only satisfying for seconds and minutes and hours. <laughs> and it, it gets scary just, yeah, God, I, I hear what you're saying, but that's my mama. 
That's my daddy. That's my brother. That's my sister. That's my son. That's my daughter. That's my girlfriend. That's my boyfriend. That's my wife. That's my husband. What do you mean I got to leave these people alone? <laughs> it's hard, you know, and I don't know if anybody ever went through this or experiencing it. But one day you will, man. And one day you're going to have to choose in order for your life to get better. You're going to have to leave the old life behind. You're going to have to leave the past in the past. And I had to. And everybody don't need to know what happened because it's not for the world to know about. But I will say I had to choose me. And when you choose you, you don't need no explanation. Quit talking so much. Everybody don't need to know your decisions or people don't need to know what happened. People don't need to know why you decide to choose yourself. People be in so many other people's business so they can just go back and gossip. You know, sometimes you got to love from a distance. Sometimes you got to love from afar. And it's okay. It's okay to do that. Because people that you love from up close wasn't appreciating it. They didn't take you serious. They wasn't respecting you. They wasn't respecting your boundaries. They wasn't taking what you said to consideration. So it's time to bounce. You've been loyal too long to people who isn't loyal. Because everybody playing both sides anyway. People ain't 100% loyal, man. People will sell you out so they can tell that person where to find you so they can kill you. It's a doggy dog world around here. It's so bad that people put principles and morals last and they put money first. People would do anything for money. You got parents killing their kids. You got best friends setting up their best friend to kill them because they got a bounty on them. You got girls setting up niggas every day. You got people snitching on each other. It's a doggy dog world. And that's why I stay to myself, man, because it's evil. It's a lot of evil people around here. And I don't got enough in me. I'm exhausted most days. And regardless of what you do, you will have to be strong enough to withstand it. You got to be strong enough when they talking shit behind your back. You got to be strong enough not to address things. Because sometimes you have to watch what people do, not what people say. You got to watch what people do. You got to watch to see if they're really a snake or not. You won't know that because you interfere in too early. You have to be strong. You have to be patient. Because everybody shows who they are eventually. The mask eventually falls off. Eventually. So we have to make sure no matter what hurts and what gets to you, you have to be strong enough to wait to the end. You won't know what happened on page 10 if you interfere at page 7, if that makes any sense. But people hate boundaries. Toxic people hate boundaries, excuse me. People who are 
healthy, people who are loving, people who are genuine, people who are sincere, isn't going to have a problem with apologizing to you. Instead of gaslighting you, manipulating you, making you feel like you're the bad guy, making you feel like you're wrong for telling them something bothers you. Can you please not do that again? Like we let a lot of shit slide every day. We let a lot of things go because we are afraid to break certain relationships with people we love that we know isn't good for us. And a lot of us call each other adults or that we are adults. But yet we sit back and watch fuck shit happen. We don't do anything. We try to justify things every day because that person is our fan, our friend, our our mother, our brother, our sister, cousin, father, and stuff. We sit back and let things happen. And we don't think that we hypocrites or the things we do is hypocritical. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect or I'm squeaky clean, but I keep that same energy. If I don't like a person or if I hate your guts, I'm not going to be in your face. I'm not going to smile at you. I ain't going to be your friend. Shit, I ain't going to fuck with you 100%. I can't do that. It's not in me to be around a person that I I don't like because if I don't like you, like, (laughs) it's something spiritual. You know what I'm saying? It's something that made me lose respect for you. And to be honest... People don't even know what demons are. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people think demons are monsters with horns and tails and this and that. They're people. They're spirits. Just like an angel is spirit, demons are spirits. Demons be jumping in and out of bodies. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And this is why you got to be careful who you befriend, who you love, you let penetrate you, who you let have sex with you. Because a demon could just sneak into somebody's body and get on to you. Soul ties are real. If you don't believe me, then you, it's not for you. But I'm speaking to the people who know exactly what I'm talking about. And you have to be careful about who you align yourself with. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to socialize and get to meet people because we on this earth to network and communicate with each other. But I'm just saying, like, once you see a red flag, it's over. You know, can't give too many people chances because it will cost you later. And when I decided to do my show, I didn't need no approval. I just did it because I wanted to do something for me. I didn't do it for nobody else but myself. And I'm grateful for my journey. I'm grateful for what I learned just walking down this path. Some days it was light, some days it was was dark, but I'm still on my path. You know, life is a journey, man. Life is humbling. I will never say fuck my life or I will never be upset about life. Life is a blessing, a gift and a curse, but it's all about how you make out of it. It's gonna be things that's gonna be terrible. It's gonna be some things That's haunting, traumatic, but also beautiful. Because we learn something from good and the bad stuff. We learn certain things. And things 
happen in order for us to change, in order for us to evolve, in order for us to just have a better perspective of things. And, and I just want for everybody to just really be careful with the people around you and the people who not around you. Because it's always going to be the people around you is going to give the people that's afar all the information that they need to destroy you. And just have the strength to endure whatever chapter that you in and, and be grateful for the chapter that you in as well. Pain don't last forever. Pain is love. It's all about going back and loving yourself, going back and realizing who you are and realizing your power that's inside you because God is, is love and Jesus is king. And I didn't come this far to give up and you didn't come this far to give up. And we just have to understand that. We have to come to grips with our past and our present so we can have a future. Nobody's stopping you but you. And just grateful for all my subscribers, all my fans, all my followers, supporters, everybody. I'm grateful for just being alive, being good, being happy. Because it's hard. It's hard staying strong when you have moments of defeat, surrendering, <laughs> and being isolated. And that's the thing that people don't understand, especially when you're considered the strong friend, everybody come to you and dump all your problems on you and expect you to have some type of advice, feedback, or insight, <laughs> but you don't know because you so busy juggling your own shit. So it's, it's tough, you know, just a whole lot of discretion that happens to be done and has to be used in order for you to stay sane and stay productive, you know what I'm saying? And and just knowing what you can tolerate and what you're not going to tolerate. And I must say this, man. You know, one thing I would say about our people that we need to work on is stop rationalizing toxic behavior. And I know that a lot of our people came from the South and that was the norm in most of these states and cities and areas that our peoples grew up at. And then they took and brought that shit with them when they migrated to the North and to, to the West and a little bit everywhere. Like it's time to let a lot of trauma go. It's time to let that shit go. It's time for all that shit to die. But yeah, we just so busy just like blaming and pointing fingers instead of having the tough discussions and the uncomfortable conversations. That's how things is going to be done. That's how things is going to be fixed is when we have a uncomfortable conversation. Because even I had to have uncomfortable conversations with my parents. There's nothing wrong with letting somebody know that they, they hurt you or that they failed you or that they wasn't there when you needed them. 
There's nothing wrong with that. And I just think that we just normalize being cowards. And we call everything disrespect. And they say, well, you don't have any kids. You don't know what it's like to raise kids. I don't have any kids, but I raise kids. And and I know for a fact that I know that if my nieces or nephew ever came to me and told me that I hurt them and that I was a horrible influence on them, I would take that with 100% accountability. And just sit them down and let them know, look, I was young. I made mistakes and I'm sorry. You know, it was just just times that, like, things was hard. And things was very difficult growing up and becoming my own man, trying to find myself, trying to find where I belonged in the world. Because it just was, I didn't know how to be a man. And I didn't know who I was and where I fit in. And I'm not the only one who just who had those thoughts. And especially when you didn't have a father growing up, you know, you're just trying to figure it out. Just trying to grow. You're just trying to find your identity, you know, and I'm grateful for the people that came into my life, the man, my OGs, who took a liking to me and took the time out to tell me things and to tell me my trials and my errors and just was really patient with me. Because nobody who isn't biologically yours owe you anything. But it does take a village. And I'm grateful for the village that I embarked on and was able to understand this is what I needed to do. I need this. I need to do this. I need to not do that. I need to choose my friends wisely. I need to do this. And we are a work in progress. Even when you think a person have it together, they don't have it together. Even when a person think you um happy, you're not 100% happy. You just maintaining, you know, And I just always wanted for my show, for my platform to be real, to be very authentic and just focus on the tough questions, the tough facts. And I was grateful for this responsibility that I I was given because it just showed me that I was more than a mistake or a fuck up or a statistic because I'm not either of those things. I'm just a man that been through hell and back and I wanted to give back to my community, to my world, to my planet, you know, just wanted to be able to just show people in a different light, give them a voice, give them some type of clarity. And I'll be happy when people tell me like I helped them, that I made them feel better, that they went home and slept good, make me feel good knowing that I'm contributing to something good, to something healthy and something authentic and something that's enrichful. So, but yeah, um, 
1804 show, chapter two, has been one of the greatest moments of my life. It has gave me redemption, gave me confidence, gave me pride, gave me strength to go on after everything. <laughs> and just wanted to just thank everybody who I met along the way, people that I already knew came on the show, people who are strangers who don't respond to me, but watch me anyway. I thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. And I just want to thank God for just being patient with me, loving me unconditionally, allowing me to see that it was all in his hands, that it was his plan. And I'm going to make sure I don't let this second chance down. But I'm out, guys. Thank y'all very much. Appreciate the ones who listen to me. Appreciate the ones who love me. And I'm out. Peace.